All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining Jenkins Online Meetup. Today's topic is on Google Summer of Code, a guide to better preparations for candidates. So my name is Alyssa Tong. I'm on the uh, I'm one of the GSOC org admins. On this webinar with me are two other GSOC um, org admins, Jean-Marc Mason and Chris Stern. And also our mentor is here. One of our mentors is here, Mark Waite. Um, some housekeeping items before we begin. So this session is being recorded. We will share the link to the recording um, after today's session. If you have questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A window throughout the session. Our org admins and mentor will respond to them. And then we also have an active GSOC discourse and Gitter channels for further discussions. Um, so feel free to join the conversations there or post your questions there after this webinar. And lastly, the code of conduct is in full effect here as well as throughout our Jenkins community. What that means, it's um, it just means be kind to one another. So on today's agenda, we will cover why you might want to join um, GSOC, how GSOC works, some important dates and tips to remember, and then we'll answer any questions at the end. So, Jean-Marc, this yes. is Yes, hello. Good uh, evening, good afternoon, good morning, everybody around here. We have now 15 uh, attendees to there, so very happy to be part of that. I'm org admin for Google Summer of Code for Jenkins. And, uh, well, one of the questions that um, the participants uh, have here, so what does it mean to participate to GSOC? What, what, what is it? It sounds great. Can you move the slide, please? Sorry. Okay. There we are. So starting the adventure of Google Summer of Codes is a great decision. Uh, participating and competing uh, uh, to be part of it will help you to to enable you to learn a lot. If you make it, get some nice pocket money, you will have the chance to make an impact on software that's widely used uh, in the world. So we have many, many users. And uh, you will have a prestigious experience that you can add to your to your resume. So this combines a lot of very powerful, interesting things that you find in open source. And this is really the crystallization of these uh, different aspects. Now I'd like to to go a little bit deeper there because these are very practical part. I'm going to use another image for that. If you embark to this adventure, this is like mountaineering. We're going to, uh, to walk together with you and you, we're going to start an adventure to discover incredible things and help you make things that you wouldn't even believe that you were able to do in the beginning. It's, it's a wonderful adventure, teamwork. You need to work and rely on the others. You will have to learn skills and use them. It is not a holiday. So at certain points, you're going to ask yourself, why did I register for that? This is, this is too much effort uh, for me. And then you bite on your teeth and you, and you continue the, uh, the adventure. For me, this is the best representation of what GSOC is. And very important, like for mountaineering, I, I hope some of, of uh, you have some experience there. The most interesting, interesting thing there is not the summit itself. 
it's the way to achieve it. So to uh, uh, to arrive to this summit, it's the preparation. It's the learning of new skills, learning to go beyond beyond what you thought you would you would do. Uh, it's the camaraderie of other people you're going to meet and learn new things. So this is all together. But remember, this is not for the fainted heart. It's an effort. You need to give quite a lot. So there's an, an, uh, uh, a front warning I want to give for that. Can you move to the next slide, please? So remember, for this adventure, is not something where you just go to, uh, to a counter and said, well, here, I want to register for the nice mountain climb going up to Himalaya and Mount Everest, and here, here is my money, and make me a big adventure. No, uh, you need to remember a few important things uh, before you start this road. Uh, there are a limited number of GSOC slots available because in order for you to, that it's an, uh, a useful experience for you, but also for the community and a good balance, uh, we need to have good coaching and mentoring uh, capacity, meaning that the slots are finite. We're not going to offer 12 places or 12 tracks, and they will all, uh, all be lousy. We're going to concentrate on what we can do and select in each of these tracks the best candidate, the best proposal. So choosing a candidate is based on the proposal. Now, proposal is a general world, word. It's we need to assess in a quite short period, who you are, what you can do, do you have the right stuff in order to embark in this adventure without taking the analogy of mountaineering, killing yourself by doing a mistake or bringing the whole, uh, the whole crew of people walking with you down and that it turns into a failure. So we're going to look at uh, the proposals. Uh, what is your experience in programming, contributing to Jenkins' project? Uh, where there are various criteria that will be used to judge and will help you to build uh, that and uh, go there. The other warning I want to, to give there, it's a long and important effort. It's not something where, well, okay, a couple of weekends, there we are, excited, uh, want to contribute, and so on. No, no, here we're talking about weeks of work to be able to um, build a proposal, build the experience, work on the project, finalize it. So it's a, a, a long effort. So don't start the adventure if you just have, uh, uh, you don't have the right shoes or you don't have the right spirit. You have only a time for a day outing. Here you embark for big mountains. I don't want to scare you. I just want to, uh, to warn you. What you will have to do right now or like the mountaineering aspect. And this is what you need to do while we are preparing everything so that Jenkins can be accepted as a mentoring organization for Google, is you need to prepare yourself. Like here, before going on the mountains, you what I call you build your Jenkins muscle. That means you get into shape. You start learning, learning uh, the product, how to use it, how to program it, how to improve it, uh, who the people are, how do you interact with people on the other side of the world. Just that is already an incredible experience. But this is what you should start doing now, learning. An important thing there is most of you are quite young and used to school where you're told what to do. 
you need to do that for next week, you have that assignment and so on. Here we entering in another world. We're entering the world of open source where we want to teach you uh, how it works. Autonomy is very important in order to be successful there. So it's very tempting to sit there and say, well, I'm, I want to contribute. I'm excited to participate in this. Where should I start? We don't have the time to explain you time and time where to start. Read the threads, read the, the various uh, discussions that have already been online. Listen or read what has been done the years before. Do your homework. And once you're stuck or something is confusing, but something uh, you, that shows that you're already in the middle of the, the, the matter, then ask. Don't forget that mentors have a job beside that, sometimes very, very demanding. And uh, so we need to focus on the help that we're able. We need to share it equally and honestly uh, to uh, everyone. This is uh, uh, what I wanted to share. I'm just going to conclude because before giving the word to the other. It's an incredible adventure. You're going to learn the most and everybody is going to learn the most by the way, by preparing. Some, their way will stop earlier. Some will go up to the summit. But participating and playing the rules and learning, everybody is going to, uh, to get rewarded for that. So, Alisa, Alisa, back to you. I think I went a Thank little you. bit overboard. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> We're all good. Thank you. Um, so what is GSOC and how does it work? So this year is going to be uh, Google's 20th year in this program. It will be Jenkins' eighth year so, uh, participating. The project successfully has completed 35, um, completed 35 project ideas. What that means, 35 Google Summer of Code candidates were mentored or participated in the program with Jenkins. And uh, let me show you for um, the project ideas for this year. Let's see if I can get out of here. Yeah. So this is the, everything is on Jenkins.io, by the way, there's a lot of really great information um, on here. So I suggest that for those that's really serious in participating or wanted to get into this program, read up. There's a lot of reading involved, okay? So GSOC 2024 project ideas are here. Um, we are still finalizing the project um, in the next week or so. We should have it more finalized in a better state. So check back here often. You will see things move from draft to accepted ideas. And then if you're interested to find out what happened in the previous year, there's also project ideas that were in 2023. Okay. And then a good, a really good place to learn uh, what happened in those projects and with those GSOC contributors, there are final project reportings that it's done. And it this is all on uh, under the blog section of um, Jenkins.io. Okay, so we've got one project idea that was completed here. And then there's the Docker-based Jenkins Quick Start. Very detailed. And, and this is what you will be doing as well. Incremental build detection probe. Yeah, what's one of and then building Jenkins.io with alternative tools. So there's a lot of good information on here. So I suggest um, for those interested to read up and learn. All right, so let me go back to slide share. Okay, so there's three important prongs to this um, program. 
It involves a, a GSOC contributor, it involves mentors, and it involves project ideas. Now, all three needs to happen and have to be in place. Uh, it cannot function one without the other. Um, what we're focusing on here is for GSOC contributors. And then for the part of the GSOC contributor, just, you know, I just want to reiterate what Jean-Marc has mentioned earlier. What this really requires from the contributor is commitment, self-discipline, self-direct, and a lot of due diligence. So if you have that in place for yourself, um, we'll need that, okay, for this program to be successful. So I will let Chris take it from here with uh, some more tips and important dates. So hi, everyone. First of all, I'm going to talk a bit about a timeline for 2024. And so uh, the first item we see on the slides from December to January, which is the period preceding this time, that's when you were supposed to build your Jenkins muscles to understand the Jenkins product, technical, and the ecosystem uh, with help of the community. From January to February is a time to study and choose project idea or ideas. First, we need to understand and explore it. Which means to um, to uh, comprehend what the project requires, such as a tech stack, which I'll get to in a bit, uh, and also includes Johnny online meetup, like this one. And um, between February and March, uh, you're supposed to actively build your project proposals, which would be submitted to Google for your application. And remember, open source software development relies on communication and working openly with the community. And we encourage open discussion. So um, we don't we really want like any private direct uh, messaging. And we encourage you to publish your draft via Google Doc and to discuss with us or anyone within the community for review comments, suggestions, and feedback. I will also encourage you to attend regular GSOC office hours, which is to be scheduled at around this time, I think. Um, the day to the day of week to be decided, to, uh, to be determined. And on April 2nd, which will be the application deadline for um, all GSOC potential candidates. So next, tech stack. So most of our projects are in Java. Some in Kotlin, some in JavaScript, HTML, CSS, Golang, even Bash, or even Docker, depending on the project requirement or requirements. And for web development Jenkins I.O. I mean our website, we use ASCII doc and gatsby.js, which means that for one of our projects this year, I think it's for the uh, st statistics uh, the website we um, we will use also gatsby.js, which because like our team is our info team is familiar with the tool. And this year, many project ideas involve proof of concept work, software development, and CICD. So many of the projects involve tooling, observability. Um, next slide, please. How to prepare. So number one, do due diligence, which means doing research on a project idea you're interested in. So this normally takes quite a bit of time to, uh, to get a basic idea. It takes at least one week, we expect. And um, after you have a general idea of what the project entails, you should ask some thoughtful questions in the Gary channels. What's expect you to interact with the community? The um, asking questions, answering questions, maybe, and even like uh, providing feedback to other people's proposals. We want you to develop your proposal with the community. So um, we're always like, um, watching our channels so uh 
if you have any like um questions about your proposals you want to discuss um please do it openly on the channels we also expect you to make impactful contributions um they pull requests um fixes uh suggestions next slide please so the important dates for 2024 are March 18th, GSAR Contributor Averaging Period begins. April 2nd, GSAR Contributor Application Deadline. And finally, May 1st, Accepted GSAR Contributor Projects announced. We are generally adhere to Google Chrome Timeline, which uh, can be found in the link referenced. Next slide, please. So reasons a good candidate may not get accepted. So in that case, in the event you, your proposal is not getting selected, it's because of the following reasons. We cannot accept all candidates that apply due to uh, limited resources with number limited number of mentors available to mentor projects. So it's like um, it depends on like um, whether that's a good match to. Good is sometimes not enough, as some proposals may be better than good. So those who are outstanding will definitely be chosen. We can submit a finite number of projects to GSAR. Your proposal will be excellent, not the highest priority for the Jenkins project. And, um, but the good thing is, we can always try again next year. So next, I'll uh, I hand it back to um, Elisa to finish yep. the talk. Yep. So, um, as I mentioned, uh, this recession, this session is being recorded. You can, we'll, I'll share the link to the recording later on. Um, but there, we also have other recordings that you can find on the our, the Jenkins YouTube channel, um, GSOC website, JohnJenkins.io. There's a wealth of information there. Um, go to the blog sections, and then, as mentioned earlier, there's Gitter and Discourse channels, um, as well as office hours recordings that um, we've had from previous years. So all that is available um, online. So right now, we will take questions, um, if you have questions. You will have to type them in the Q&A. Yeah. So we have a question here from Mayush, who is asking, can graduated one participated, participate in GSOC 2024? So what are the conditions to participate to GSOC? You can pick up this, this question. Can I take that question? So Chris, you want to answer it? Do you want John Mark yeah. to answer it? Me? I can answer it because I, I did check. Um, I think the eligibility criteria, one of them is like you have to be new to open source, but you don't have to be a student. Young professional is okay. So, yep. so the answer is yes, you can participate. So we have another question here from Hunak. Reading it, do we have specific communication channels for different channels? Can we start contributing now? Who's going to answer that one? I can. Do you want me to answer that? Go for it, John Mark. Okay. So, uh, Runak, there are two phases that you need to be uh, aware of. The first phase is getting acquainted to the project that you're investing your time uh, in. Uh, there, you are uh, competing with all other uh, uh, possible candidates. 
And uh, we want to answer these questions only once. And there, as in open source, everything is done in the open. And Chris insisted on uh, uh, on that. Uh, is we avoid as much as possible one to one communication uh, channels or, or or communication because only one person is going to benefit in it, which is a waste of time, and is not good uh, for um, uh, the other participants because they they will feel. Um, uh, cheated. When the topic gets very technical, uh, project uh, mentors or the, mentor, the lead mentor very often has a dedicated channel. Most of the time, these channels or majority, it is a dedicated um, a gitter or element. Uh, well, it's a it's a gitter or what's the other name of the protocol matrix? Um, a channel where Specific questions uh, uh, are answered. And, uh, so at this stage, you're still uh, on the competition. Contributing, uh, be careful there, because if you start contributing on the proposed solution, that means that you have uh, that you're starting before it even. Uh, even the first, uh, well, how do you say it in English? But it, it, the race didn't start yet. So which is a little bit. So think well where you're contributing. So don't contribute the full solution uh, with it. But what is important is that you can and should work on fixing problems that are in the periphery of it that you learn and show that you start to master the complete environment where uh, where the particular element uh, is. Uh, so if it's around a particular plugin, starting to fix issues that are not directly in the scope of the project that you're proposing and a way to implement uh, it, but a lot of other problems and a, a, a lot uh, uh, lying around, you start learning how the code works. You start learning how to use the environment. You start to learn how to interact with the maintainers, which are also an important stakeholder uh, in it. So can we start contributing? Uh, this, is, um, this is a good idea. Just be careful not to code the complete answer or what you think is the complete answer of GSOC before it has even started. So I hope that that answer was complete, but still uh, intelligible uh, for you. Okay, uh, I lost track. So I see I, Ayush saying thank you. Uh, Alisa, go ahead. I think there's uh, the next question is, what are the chances of someone's project's idea get selected for different projects? <laughs> Can I answer to that one? <laughs> this yeah. way, if somebody else wants to. So. The chances are high. There are between zero and infinite. So that means nobody knows. Um, figure, I, I should have prepared that, but to give you an idea, normally the, the these information are, are still available in the 2023 uh, documentation. Uh, so we had um, uh, several proposals. So we had a, around 60 proposals for that went down to four or five of projects. And we had about 10, a 10 person competing average uh, on project. Remember, we choose the one that in our opinion has the best chance has the best proposal and a most efficient uh, way of solving it and contributing uh, to uh, uh, to the open source project. Mark, do you have something you want to add there, or have I been too kind in giving too many? No, I think I think the the crucial thing for me will your project idea be accepted? One crucial piece is is there a lead mentor who will take the who will lead the mentoring for that project? 
right? Because without a lead mentor, we're not going to we're not going to run that project. So part of the persuasion process in the project proposal is persuading the lead mentors like me that that idea is a good idea and it's it's good enough to justify. So so the competition is part of it is persuading lead mentors. Ah, I want to be involved in this or that. Right. There's the one of the finite challenges is the number of lead mentors that are available. Yeah, very true. Yeah, I forgot that nuance. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chris, do you want to add something? Um, yeah, I, I really want to like raise the the but to bring up that like um like what what the what what the candidates do uh can impact the project. So it's like if you can have like um if you show you have the abilities to do a good proposal, if you can like suggest ideas to um help bring a project to life, it may improve your chances too. Now, Sridhar has asked a question that I think may hint is a good question for others to understand the answer because it implies, uh, I think it hints at a misunderstanding of how the project, how Google Summer of Code works. So Sridhar's question is, there are around 14 projects listed in the draft ideas. When will the projects filtered after selection by Google is disclosed? The misperception there is that Google somehow chooses project ideas. They do not. What, what the process is, is the Jenkins project goes to Google and proposes to Google, we propose to be an organization under the Google Summer of Code project. Google may say yes, but th then, then if I recall correctly, we submit a set of project ideas that we're, that we're proposing to them and they will look at, and this is based on, if I remember right, it's based on contributor proposals that we submit, right? And Google yes. then says, we'll fund this many, where many, maybe one, two, zero, one, two, three, or four. So our organization proposal, if we're accepted as an organization, that does not narrow the field of project ideas. So the project ideas is very open and the Jenkins project will select which project's ideas it finally submits, and then Google says how many of them will they fund. Did, did I get that correct, John Mark, in terms of the sequence? Yeah. Yes, you're, you're very okay. true, and somehow I misled and did not answer to, do the, uh, to the correct uh, question. So you exactly said it. So there are two parameters there. Uh, we, we, we offer a lot of projects ideas and say, well, this could be something, this could be something that can be done. Several mentors volunteered to a couple of them. Uh, it will not be the case uh, uh, that mentors will spread themselves thin on various projects. Uh, generally, this, this works out very badly unless there is a strong mentoring a team. That means that uh, on the, th let's say, 13 project ideas that are on the table, uh, we're going to look, do we have a balance between strong proposals on that and mentoring team? And this we will shake and come up with our shortlist and say, Google, this is what we will be able to do this year. We have enough mentors and we have a good candidate per project. This is what we propose. Are you funding that? So this is the way it, it works. Chris, do you want to add something or Mark? No, it, it, the, the crucial thing there is, and I think that ties also to Akasha's question about, hey, for plugin installation manager tool, how do we choose which, which are the right features and which aren't, which aren't. And the answer is we discuss back and forth in a project idea proposal, in a, uh, the, a potential contributor says, I think we should do this, this, and this. And potential mentors say, no, I think the priority should be that, that, and that. And that bouncing back and forth between contributor, potential contributor and potential mentor is how we arrive at a better plan and we all come to a better idea of which things are most interesting and which are not. And just to jump on what Mark said, this process of thinking 
of coming with ideas, discussing together is precisely the thing that we want to teach you that you learn. And this is not something that you learn at school. This is not something that you ask to do in a professional environment. There, generally, you obey orders and do, yes, sir, you're right, sir, and I'll code that that way. It's not the case here. We're all equal with different experiences, and we work together and think together, and nobody has the, the, the definitive answer. We think together. And this requires also from the candidate to step forward and show that you you master this uh, this step, which is very difficult, and we will help you uh, for that. But it's come forward with ideas, participate in the in the conversation, prepare arguments. I think this feature is a good idea for that and that reason, and this is a weak point of that. What do you think? Exactly, this process is key for GSOC and open source. Sorry, I went overboard again, sorry. Great, so so another question from Kari Noida. What are some of the hallmarks of successful proposals? Does the background of the contributor matter and the background absolutely matters, especially in terms of our observation of their involvement in the Jenkins project? We One of the things we're doing when we accept a, Jen, a Google Summer of Code project proposal is we are accepting the risk that we're going to give our time as mentors to someone who is going to be doing software creation, coding. And the challenge with that is we are now relying on the fact that you have enough coding skills to do the job. And if we haven't seen evidence of your coding skills through pull requests, through submissions, through other other examples we're going to be very skeptical of coding skills right we we it is an unfair thing for us to say oh we accept your project without having first seen that you have enough coding skills to actually do the job and the way you show that is by submitting pull requests to to show evidence that hey look here's how i wrote this here's how i did that so your involvement in the Jenkins project is crucial to your potential being to be accepted as a contributor to Google Summer of Code. John Mark or Alyssa? Okay, I'm good. I think we need to move forward yeah. on the question and somewhere I, I lost a little bit There's, the, the um, track. What is so the I next can one? go up. There's a question about the Cloud Events plugin. Um, I have doubt from this project draft of cloud events plugin development will this project be rebuilt or we have to make it from scratch and and the answer there is we don't know and the reason we don't know is because we haven't done the the design work to decide and that's what we're looking to a contributor to make that decision understand the cloud events api decide if the existing cd events plugin is a good thing to transform to use the cloud events api uh, that that one the the challenge there is that's of interest to potential to potential organizations like Fidelity Investments or um, U.S. Bank or other financial institutions who want to do integration between systems. Cloud Events is a CDF project to do that. Uh, right now, I think the crucial gap there is I think we're looking for a lead mentor as well. Mm. Okay, we have another uh, question here. Is it okay to start building a proposal now or should we wait for the finalized project list? Uh, the answer is yes to both. So there's a quick one. No. Uh, what do you mean with building a proposal? If building a proposal is describing it, um, um, putting into details the functionality, the pros and cons, uh, eventually build a prototype uh, or a, a mock of the, the solution. Yes, you can, you can start uh, uh, for it. Um, you should publish it and make it so, ask for review and so, because you, you might attract uh, mentors. The condition for it to be in the finalized 
project list is that you have a strong worked out solution. So complete, not coded with code. So uh, here it compiles because this is not what we are asking. We want to see the whole processing uh, and there is a complete process to uh, define what, uh, uh, what, what needs it. But uh, it's only later that we will see is your proposal strong enough and do we have the mentors for that? And then it'll, it'll make it. So there is a likelihood uh, and happened last year and I had to disappoint some people and say, well, here we have a lot of people that are working on these proposals, but because uh, one of the mentors had to withdraw, uh, we already know that this project is not going to make it in the final list. And we advise you to start investigating another project. So uh, you, sh you can start working on a proposal and it is also wise to wait and observe how the, the things go. Is a mentoring power behind your project? And this you can see, are people reacting to the proposal, your draft proposal that you made public and other uh, comp uh, competitors? I'm going to say a little word if, Elisa, you, you're checking the time, right? Um, yes, I am. There, you there is uh, the, the topic, uh, probably there will be other uh, discussions about that. Uh, cheating. One of the, the primary um, values of open source is that everything that you do is done in the open. As soon as you start trying uh, working bilaterally, or keep things for you and hide it, you build suspicion and you start making mistakes because you're designing your own solution, which is not what the community as a whole wants. So sharing, working openly is part of the system. Taking other people's idea and work on them is also okay. But there are limits uh, to that, and you need to demonstrate. It's like in scientific research, you can use and you should use other people's work, quote it, mention it, but attribution to other people's idea is critical. And keep that in mind. So. Being open, sharing, teaching, and learning together is a primary value of open source. But as every good idea, it can very easily be perverted. And it's a very uncomfortable situation afterwards uh, when we see and hear, well, pieces of my proposal have been copied by this, or I suspect that one, uh, or and and we see this kind of cribble, if this is an English word, uh, uh, you know what kids do when they fight over. Uh, uh, this is a very bad sign, and something uh, we'll be very disappointed uh, of. It's not easy to find a balance, and I'm ready to to discuss uh, in other forms uh, about that. But this is learning how open source works. It has nothing to do with the competition that you have at school where, where it, it, it's copying on your neighbor or it's it, school is a complete other set of uh, rules. And here you're entering the real world of creativity. So, so I'll move to the next question. Yep. So we have about 15 minutes left, Jean-Marc. Um, okay. So the yeah, next okay. question, once Google admins approve Jenkins as a participating organization, will there be a specific number of projects ready to assign? If not, do we get a chance to propose a draft? I think we already answered that question. Yeah. Um, should I contribute... Should I contribute keeping in mind a particular draft project or contributing overall in Jenkins is better? 
Um, Mark, do you have an idea yeah, there? It's see. it's at least at least for me the challenge of trying to focus your work on a specific project idea likely narrows the field into which you can contribute. We will then not see enough code contributions from you and have a very difficult time assessing. So if if you don't contribute more widely than just around your project idea, you risk us not seeing enough contributions to assess whether or not you're able to actually do the project. Um, can I, there's, yeah, go ahead, Chris. So it's like, I think it's a, a better approach would be to focus on both, like focus on developing your own draft project proposals and also like contributing overall to the Jenkins ecosystem via PRs. So you can use the PRs in your application. Yeah. And I, I will add there, contributing with code is not the only thing. You need also to learn what the tool is about, how to use the tool, what is continuous integration, what is unit testing, all these things that I hope that are taught in your, in your schools and that you know already, but these concepts uh, should be mastered uh, before. Uh, and and be because changing a comma in a, in a comment is a contribution, but doesn't show that you know what a Jenkins pipeline is. Hey, so next question: Can people whose proposals aren't accepted follow along, audit the process of coding of the accepted project? Mark. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. And it's open source. Right. Well, more importantly, the. The project, yeah, to John Mark's exact statement, the project work will happen in public, right? The way that the selected contributor will submit their work is by submitting public pull requests to the destination thing. So last year when Vandit Singh was working on, on doing documentation, it was to a publicly visible repository. It was crucial. Uh, when we did the pipeline steps doc generator, it was to a public repository. When we when we did work on the Git plugin, it was to the public repository. So absolutely, you can follow along. Uh, the mentors are following along. You bet. Yeah. Okay. Next question: Can we work on? Oh, questions are moving all over the place for me. Can we work <laughs> on dropped projects if it if it's worth enough to Im to impact users much better? Yes, and yes, absolutely. It's, it's open source. Therefore, what that means is contributions are come from all over in many different ways, and you're welcome to contribute. It's a good experience to learn. It's a great way for you to, to understand better how software development works and how open source software development works. Uh, the additional thing I, I would add to that is uh, you will not benefit from the structured mentoring organization uh, that's put in place for Google Summer of Code. So uh, you, you need to find somebody who on his spare time uh, will help you. And so the autonomy for this way of doing uh, needs to be uh, or, or requires more um, uh, engagement there. But this is a, a very positive way to continue, learn, and a very, very, very good way to prepare for a next GSOC selection session. Yeah. Thanks, John Mark. Um, by when should we try to keep draft proposals ready? Uh, Chris um, yeah, the there was a slide on yeah. that with the dates. Um, with the months. So I suggest you go back onto that slide and um, and take a look. Yeah. Um, Aniket, now I'm interested in the bearer token authentication for Git and Git, Git client plugin. And I've also started researching, but my question is, should I start building a proposal right away before the final project list display on Jenkins.io? So... That's a that's there's a secret there's not a secret there's a public piece of information there that may help you on a cat. I'm I'm Mark Waite. I maintain the Jenkins Git plugin, and therefore things that are targeting the Jenkins Git plugin are interesting to me. I'm probably also a lead mentor, 
So, so starting work on that is a good thing. Now, will you, right now, I'm a little hesitant on it because I'm not sure that what's been proposed by the user is actually needed. And so part of the research is to understand, is what the user is requesting really necessary or is there another way to achieve it? Yes, you could start immediately on that kind of investigation. And yes, that would be a good thing to inclu include in a project plan. And even if the project is not selected, if you do it the right way, you will learn a, a, a bunch of important things and you will learn the methodology and thing, and you would be very right. uh, satisfied by the adventure. Get, and get knowledge is a very useful thing in the world of software development. It has, Git has won the battle for software configuration management. And therefore, everything you learn about Git is helpful. Um, I'm interested in the automatic specification generator for Jenkins REST API because I have seen plugins like Jenkins REST, which provide convenient operation on Jenkins from the Java API. Is this job aimed at making it easier for other developers to use this plugin? Good, good question. And it's not really about a plugin but it is that Jenkins in general has a REST API and what it does not, and if you look at the REST API from a running Jenkins, go to almost any URL in Jenkins, append the letters slash API, and you'll see a nice web page that highlights the contents of the API at that point. However, that nice user-friendly presentation of the API is not a formal specification of the API. And the idea here for this, this project idea is it will help a number of things if we have a formal specification of that API. But that formal specification should be ex derivable from the existing code base because that's how it's done now. Right, each of those API entry points is implemented in some Java source code. So, is it a specific plugin? No. Is the automatic specification generator targeted to make things easier for Jenkins users? Yes. Jamar, did can... you want to add something? No, I'm. Uh, I think the 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 answer was uh, complete. In, okay. Uh, so I just wanted to sh to uh, jump on Philip uh, Glantz's uh, question very. Uh, is it allowed to stream the work on platforms like Twitch? I would say, well, uh, you adults, you know what you do. Now, uh, <laughs> jokingly, uh, they have been pair programming uh, very successful experiences working uh, on it. Uh, it's useful in certain cases. Now, the biggest challenge that you're going to experience there uh, is the time zone difference, and generally, people by well, here in this meeting, you get it smash on the on the nose. We have people where it's middle of the night, and our people where it's the wee hours of the morning. Uh, so, uh, live streaming and and things like that. Yeah, why not? But it's it's there's no thing like you need an authorization and it needs to go through uh, four ministries before it gets the stamp of approval. No, that's not that's yeah. not the case. Yeah. So Darren Pope and I have done the improve a plugin tutorial on the Jenkins on the Jenkins that is now hosted on the Jenkins developer pages. Uh, improve a plugin was initially a series of live streams that we happened to record, it, record. Now we didn't do it on Twitch, but it was a series of live streams that we recorded and we ultimately decided, hey, this is useful enough. Let's put it in the Jenkins documentation. So yes, is it is it useful and helpful to live stream on a platform? If you find that helpful, great. Yeah, in my case, yeah. um, I had to do a little more planning and thinking before I was ready to do those improve a plugin tutorials. There was quite a bit of, research to understand how to how to do the steps before we made it look fairly easy in the improve a plugin tutorial um can i add to it mm -hmm. yeah. i just want to say like 
do remember to get permissions like so, because like you you need to know like your mentors are comfortable with the idea before going ahead with it Good point, Chris. Always, always look at the others and think, how is what I'm going to do perceived? So this, this, there is a human dimension in, in all this adventure uh, that's very big. Now we have five minutes left. I have here a, an yeah. interesting question from uh, Aniket I'm going to give a shot at. So are big contributions mandatory or small code PR uh, also okay? Um, whatever you want or, or do, don't forget what we need to see. And sometimes a small PR may require hours and hours of sweat. So I remember discussion in a previous life in measuring a developer's performance by single line of codes. Uh, no, it's not the size of the PR. It's what we need to see is how do you master or how much knowledge do you have of the functional environment you're working in? Do you master the development language? Do you master testing? Do you master the basic concepts of the language uh, that you are? And these PRs are there to allow us uh, to have a very good idea uh, of what you can do. So uh, to give an extreme example, changing a comma or a capitalization in a, a comment is wasting our time. Uh, uh, on the other side, a, a, a substantial uh, um, a PR that adds a new functionality, has tests, uh, uh, test suites and all that that's complete is a very good one. And also the PR that's maybe four lines, but is fully, uh, fully uh, uh, hand tuned and optimized and has uh, uh, 80 lines of tests to demonstrate that these three lines of codes do what they're supposed to do. Um, uh, this is okay too. So if somebody wants to add. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I think we have about think, three minutes left, so let's yeah. go to the last, the last question. Last question, I, I think, yes. So can I, may I offer on the last question? Yes, please. Go ahead. Okay, yes. so uh, uh, the question is, I'm interested in screenshot automation for Jenkins documentation. Uh, I'll end the description of the question there. Screenshot automation for Jenkins documentation uh, is a good choice for a project if you're interested in how would we capture pictures that we can then embed in the Jenkins documentation. And yes, it is vague because what you'll have to do is run Jenkins, have some way of describing to Jenkins where it should navigate, and then you take the screenshots and capture those to compare with what's already in the existing documentation. No, it's not supposed to be a plugin. It would be a separate tool. We already have separate tools that run other documentation generation exercises. And we would, this would be another tool like that. And you can read the description there. You're welcome to ask more questions. Uh, right now, I'm less interested personally in that one than I am in some others, but there may be other mentors who are interested in, in mentoring it. That's it from me. Thanks, Mark. Jean-Marc or Chris, anything else to add before we end? I just want to say, this is an incredible and exciting adventure that you all are going to embark it. You're going to learn. Some will stop earlier. Some will go all the way to the summit. But this is an incredible adventure you're going to start. And I'm always happy and proud to be just a little piece to, to share my enthusiasm about that and this great adventure. I never have been uh, disappointed. Yeah, this is what I wanted to to say. Thanks, Sean Mark. So, somebody else wants to conclude? Thanks. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'll get the recording out shortly. Um, questions and discussion can continue on Gitter after this one. Thanks, okay. all. Bye. Bye-bye.